So, my name is Kurt Smith. Hi, I'm uh, Tom Stapleton. I'm one of the founders and CEO of Make Your Mark Super. I'm one of the co-founders of Make Your Mark Super and my role is head of operations slash partnerships slash everything else that won't be done by the CEO. <laughs> The morning routine with Tom Stapleton. Pretty excited to do this actually. Um, it's been a long time coming. We always have ideas in the office of how we're going to kind of get ourselves out there. So, this is a day in the life of, of me, one of the co founders of Making Mark. And one thing that's definitely important to me is my morning routine, which is heading down to the beach every day. It's kind of like really centers me as, as to why I do what I do. It's so easy to kind of get like, especially being like a co founder, you get so lost in so many things to do with the business and um, things change every day. It's so fast paced, heading down to the beach just resets you. Yeah, this obviously we've just done the walk just now and yeah, the view never gets old here. I'm originally from the UK and it's weird that we, we didn't grow up in a place like this. So I never take it for granted. I, I love where I am now and it kind of actually gives me purpose and gives me drive to do what we do with Make Your Mark and yeah, sustainable investing and trying to make an impact with, with superannuation for pretty much this is, the, this is my reason why. I can just walking down the hill every day. Obviously the water ain't great today and the surf is massive, but mate, it's always great to get on the beach. And I think everyone's got that why. Like everyone's got that why, like they want to make an impact or why they want to be sustainable. And for me, the beach is a thing that we all kind of have that common ground. We all have the same interests and same goals. We want to keep this clean and like, this is our home, right? Everyone loves the ocean. So we should do everything in our power to try and keep it as pristine as possible. Like, what more can you allow? <laughs> Yeah, today's a, a really big day. We've got a lot on in the business. It's actually part of a huge week for the for the business as a whole. We're um, you know, three years in the making, all coming down to this week. Uh, we've got a few important um, approvals coming through. So hopefully by the end of the week, we'll have um, yeah some really great news out of that. And today's a, a great example of a life in for us, a life in the day of a, of a startup. You know, it's full of a lot of random things that we're getting up to. You know, it started out this morning at the absolute crack of dawn where we, we headed off to Manly to help the guys out, uh, Pit Water Rico. Um, they do a lot of stuff in the community and they'd organize a, a bit of a cleanup around town, obviously with the floods that are going on. Um, you know, it's really, it's really important for the community to come together, really support each other in this time. So we, we just wanted to get involved with that and um, spent the morning doing a beach cleanup and now heading into the office. First day of the vlog as well. When I look at where I am at now, I don't look at it as if there was a there was a single moment. You know, it wasn't. You know, I had an epiphany or I had a, a, a light bulb moment. I've, I've always had it there. The, the catalyst was definitely the the birth of my son. It was. It really made me do a, a bit of a stock take of my life. You know, wanting to make sure. Um, that I was happy, I guess, you know, that I'm doing the right thing and I'm doing the best that I can and I'm setting the right example 
and um, yeah, for my for my son. So yeah, that, that that was definitely a catalyst, and it just led me to think about the the bigger picture a lot more. It, it really made me hone in on wanting to to live a life with more purpose, with a bit more meaning. I'd sort of gone down the whole career where, you know, a lot of people tell you, you know, get a job, go and work for the big company and, and progress in your career and make as much money as you can and buy a house and settle down. And I was certainly along that track. You know, that was, um, I, I, I went straight from school, the age of 18, into a bank. I progressed quickly. I was, I was successful. Um, but the further I got um, sort of down that path, the more miserable I became, which is, which is really weird because, you know, I was achieving all the things that uh, were, were told to me were the most important things. And I went, why, you know, why, why am I unhappy when I seem to have ticked all these boxes? And it was really because I was, I was doing what I thought I should be doing, not what I wanted to do. Oh, it's been a, a big old journey. Um, to be honest with you, I wouldn't say that I'd ever imagine myself sitting here right now on the cusp of being one of the co-founders of Australia's next sustainable super fund. But my, my journey is so, so diverse. Um, had big aspirations and dreams to be a chemical engineer. Uh, studied for three years in the UK. Didn't really think about the planet or sustainability. And then I guess luckily for me, um, when I graduated, the jobs had dried up. So went to go work for the bank, did that for a couple of years. Um, yeah, working in finance wasn't really sold on it and I was starting to lean towards more in wanting to work for purpose um, and I moved to Oz in, when I was 24. I uh, worked there for a bit <clears throat> as a chemical engineer funnily enough out in Western Sydney and yeah hated every single day of it. I was stuck in the lab, I wasn't speaking to anyone and I'm a super outgoing person. I, want, I need to speak to people and that just wasn't me so left that job um, got my PR, but whilst I was waiting for my residency for Australia, I went to go live in Bali. So not a bad kind of trade-off. It gave me a chance to kind of think about my life because I wasn't working. And I guess that's a luxury that most people don't really have at such a young age. We're like taught to go to university, go get a job, get a mortgage, get a house, get a family, have kids. And that kind of moment of me in Bali um, made me think about what I want to do with my life and I really wanted to kind of make an impact. I, I believed I had the skill set to do it. I just, I guess I didn't know how. And you know, as life goes on, got back to Australia and needed to find a job because obviously I was just super expensive and you can't live for free. So I applied for loads of jobs as financial planning and luckily, I guess the stars aligned and I walked into an office where Kurt, the CEO was you are managing you know, wealth management and you interviewed me and of course I nailed the interview. <laughs> we had a specific scenario where um, we were trying to at one point in, in wealth management, um, you know, we, we would put together portfolios, investment portfolios for clients and we had a client who had the interest in building a sustainable portfolio and we set about doing that and as we were going through that process and we were looking at the options that were available on the market and we found that we were actually really surprised because there were most options that were on the market which were very few at that time said that they were sustainable but they weren't sustainable said that they were ethical but they had companies in which most people would probably deem not ethical and so then we went okay what if we try and do something in this space but we do it the right way and we don't make it cloaked in secrecy. And we disclose everything that we invest in. And how about this? We're actually, when we say we're sustainable, we're investing in sustainable businesses and we have sustainable strategies and we're actually trying to make a difference instead of trying to make a quick buck off you know, the unsuspecting consumer. Make your mark represents a lot more than just a big bucket of money at the end of your working um, time. It's, it's a connecting of people it's bringing people together. It's about trying to create a business that um, allows people to align their investments with their values, have purpose and meaning with what they're doing. It's far more holistic to me than just a superannuation business. It's almost like a, a community business that does 
several good things in its operations, both through investing, through how we engage with community, through the works we do with charities, through the time that we, time and efforts that we donate to good causes. So, um, yeah, to me, it means all of those things. <laughs> Are you looking at me? Or are you looking at the camera? No way you look at those. He hates getting me eye contact. I don't know why. It's weird. Because you look so deep into your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're about to hit a pivotal moment in, I guess, the business's like, lifetime. Like, we've been doing this thing for three years now. Yeah, we're on the cusp of yeah, launching with a pilot. And then we've potentially got, we've got the, the crowdsource funding campaign, which is something that's never really happened in the superannuation space properly. Yeah. So the cameras are here because we're, we want to capture these moments. Like these are kind of like life changing moments for us and the business. And people always talk to us about, you know, yes, we do sustainable investing and yes, we are a superannuation company, but people love the brand and they love the people behind the brand. Mm. So this is a chance for to give people you know, access to, I guess, the final stages of launching a super fund. And this week in particular is uh, a, a very important week, isn't it? You know, out of the, the three years. It's um, crunch time. By the end of this week, we'll have a very good understanding of what our destiny holds or what the uh, business holds.